Okay, on location here with no Wi-Fi, no internet access. Central Gateway is here in this nice little enclosure. So ESP32 access point, all trig boards communicating back to this, passing over to the 4G LTE particle boron module, and then out to the cloud. All right, we're monitoring two doors, one window in this location. So here we are at the front door. So we'll go ahead and open it up for a test. Wakes up the trig board from the single digit sleep current, sends it over up to the cloud and back to my phone anywhere in the world. Front door has opened. Also monitoring on the closure of the door. And there it is, front door has closed. Okay, and just to show you what the window looks like, cause I've got two contacts wired in series. So we're able to monitor these two windows. And let's just give it a quick test here. Wakes the trig board up just the same and Gym window has opened and then we close it and we should then get window has closed. So that's good. What's also nice about this system is that we have the timer enabled. So if the windows are left open, we're going to get a notification as well. So if you leave the location and forget to close the windows, you'll get that push notification. All right, this is going to be a full tutorial on how to use the trig board in a cellular system, which is actually my favorite way of using the trig board because it relies on no internet access, no existing Wi-Fi. It's battery backed, so even if the power goes out, you can still get your push notifications out. And by the way, the trig board is an ultra low power platform for the ESP32. And we've got base firmware that ships with every board so that even this somewhat complex application is very easy to set up out of the box and that's what this video is going to be a start to finish tutorial and actually what you see here is going into a real installation so we're going to be monitoring a front door a side door and a set of windows so we've got three trig boards and we're also in the future going to add more to this system so it's very easy to expand on as well we want to add a flood sensor to this uh, installation as well as a trig board to monitor the garage door so all very easy and with the base firmware it's a breeze we don't even need to compile any code so Let's go ahead and get started. So let's just jump over to the trig board docs here and I want to show you the project page for this. So over to the left you'll see cellular battery backed system. And we've got a really nice diagram here at the top that shows sort of how this works. So because it's cellular we need a gateway so that all trig boards in the system when they wake up from their sleep state, their single digit microamp sleep state they are going to send a message to the gateway. So we're going to have to sacrifice a trig board to act as the gateway here. And we're going to set that up with some special trig board code, which I've got a link to and I'll actually do that here because these trig boards here are, are all fresh brand new boards out of inventory with their base firmware. So we're going to have to flash the new code to this. It's going to be very easy. We're gonna do it over the air. So uh, we'll get to that in a second here. So when the gateway trig board receives that message, it's going to pass it over to the cellular modem. This is a particle 4G LTE modem and it's called the boron module. So it's going to pass it to this. The data plan is actually pretty cheap for this. And it's going to send it through the particle cloud you see here. And we've got a web hook built into that. And I'll show you how to set that up that sends out the push notifications. And for that, we're going to use pushover. So that's also very easy to set up. And then out goes the notification to all of your devices. And we can also expand on this quite a bit. Uh, for example, we can add monitors to this. And monitors are very cool because when the message is received by the gateway, it then repeats the message out to other boards in the system called monitors that think can play mp3 files. So like if this was monitoring the front door, you may want it to play a message like the front door has opened. And uh, that's how I have it set up here in my house. And we will uh, expand on this system because it'll be nice in this installation, you know, when somebody opens up any of these doors for some loudspeaker to go off, which by the way, that's what I call this, the ultimate home security system. Because again, 
Uh, cellular back does not rely on any internet access, Wi-Fi, existing Wi-Fi. We're going to make the access point hidden. That's built into the code. And it's, you know, can be named anything you want, you know, and I like to give it some random character mess, you know, so even if somebody can sniff it out, it won't mean anything. And uh, it's just its own access point. And these guys, by the way, are not always connected to that access point. The way the trig board works, of course, is that it's completely dead. And it's just listening for that normally open or normally closed contact to change states. We're going to configure these, by the way, to send a notification on when the door opens and then again when the door closes. So it'll actually send out two push notifications on those two states. So when it does wake up, when the state changes, it's going to power up, connect to this access point, and then send the packet over and then out goes the push notification. And because I wanted this to be very easy to, to get started with, I also created a gateway carrier board here. So then you just have to solder in your boron module and trig board, and then you have a complete system. Put a giant battery on your particle, so now it's battery backed, and then have a wall adapter for your USB power so that when you do have AC power it recharges the battery and then when the AC power goes you've got a fully battery backed system. So I think we're ready now to actually build this out and the first thing I'm going to do is solder in the boron and trig board to the gateway and then we'll get these the code loaded on these two guys here first. All right, that was pretty easy. I uh, just had a couple spare headers I cut down to mount the trig board to the carrier board there, and then just solder down the boron module, and that's all there is to it. Now you don't need a carrier board, you could just wire over to the trig board. It's only a, uh, what, a UART TX and RX, and then 3.3 volts and ground, so it's pretty easy to just wire that over as well, but this keeps it nice and clean. So here's a very important thing about the uh, this setup here is that the boron module will be powering the system. So do not connect a battery to the trig board. In fact, don't connect anything to the trig board. It will get all of its power and everything from the boron LTE module. And before you plug in the boron module, make sure you attach the antenna. So we're going to go ahead and do that with the U.FL connector here very carefully. Okay, cool, so we got that flashing green. The uh, trig board is flashing blue, okay, which is totally normal for the base firmware. And we've got a cyan uh, breathing LED on the boron module. I'll just go ahead and connect the battery as well. And what we wanna do now is go and log into the particle console. Uh, and keep in mind that this board here I've already set up. So what you would do with a brand new board out of the box is, you know, set up your account with Particle. You would download the app and you would commission the boron module to your account. And then from there you would ha also have a flashing cyan LED. And the first thing we are going to do is set up the boron module. So from the docs page, if we go down to the gateway setup here, and it's very easy. The code is dead simple because all it's doing is just catching the data from the trig board, turning it into a packet, something that the webhook can recognize at the particle cloud side, and then sending it off to pushover. We're actually using a webhook for this. So it's actually, you know, it's very simple. So I've got a link here to the web IDE. We'll just go ahead and open that up. Okay, and here we are. I've named it Gym Security. This is to monitor a small gym. And you see down here, it's flashing Trig V8 security. This is the wrong Trig board, or uh, the wrong Boron module. I've got a couple of these in the system. So, all right, so I just clicked this and I starred this Boron module, which has been titled Jim. And now when we flash the code here, it will go to the correct module. So let's go back over to the docs, and all we need to do is copy and paste out this code here. And I think in a future video, I'll really break down the code and how everything works. I think this is gonna be more of just how to get up and running with this as fast as possible. But if we go down here to the send data function, 
I just want to point a few things out. So there's two webhooks that are called from this code and it depends on, I guess, how you want to use it. Uh, in the docs, I explain that you can send data to both Adafruit and Pushover. So there's two webhooks that are called, but I think for this tutorial, most people probably aren't going to use the Adafruit stuff, so we're going to comment that out. So right here, particle.publish to the Adafruit data here, we're just gonna select this and I'm going to do a command forward slash and that will comment all of that out. So only data will go to the pushover webhook just for push notifications. You might want to use Adafruit here if you were to, you know, want to use that data to log it um, or do something else with it, like tie it into if this then that or, or whatnot. You could even do this. So this will probably be in its own video, but this is plotting all the data using Grafana. So you've got a complete log of all of your events from the trig boards and all of the battery voltage readouts here. So this is really, really cool. And it's also super easy to set up. So I'll probably uh, do this in another video. But for now, we're just going to get the data out via pushover. So you've got the push notifications out to your devices. Okay, so this now looks good. We'll just comment out that Adafruit code right there and we will flash this out. And again, just want to zoom in on this so you can see which lines you can comment out if you're not bothering with uh, logging it to io.adafruit. So right there, and this should be good to go. So we're going to flash it. It's compiling it, flashing it, and we'll just watch the boron module here. There you go, it's starting to flash. I think they call that magenta, now it's green, and it's reconnecting. We should see it go live here soon. Okay, so that's reconnected now, but it will not be able to do anything because we have not set up the webhooks yet. So we're going to use pushover for the webhook. So what you wanna do is go over now to the docs, and supported services, go to pushover, which is right here, and this explains how to set this up. So you need two things for this. You need your user key and uh, API token key. So once you have those two things, copy them down because we'll need them for the webhook. All right, so I just set this up myself because this is a brand new installation. And now what we can do, since we've got the web ID opened up here, we can just click down here uh, to the bottom left of this screen, console. Okay, then you're going to click on integrations, then you're gonna click new integration, and this is going to be a simple webhook. Okay, in here now, we're going to give it some name, give it a name that matches what we have there in the code, which is pushover. So if we go back here, you see right here, particle.pushover, publish pushover. So you want that to match that. All right, and then I just jumped back over now to the docs because it's easy right in here to see what we need to do. So then the URL, just copy what you see here right into there. It's going to be a post. The request format is web form, and then any device can send to this. And then you expand the advanced settings like this, and then you see in the docs here, we want that to be custom. And then we'll need to add a bunch of rows so that it matches up exactly what we have here in the docs. And you see how we've got uh, the values stuffed in like this. I think they call this like the mustache format. I forget what they call it, but in here, this is how we're able to pass in the message, like the trig board name and then the message, you know, uh, front door has opened and then the sound here as well which I don't know what all of the sounds are but I do know that bike I think is the default so set that up and then in token and user that's right from pushover so so let me just explain what token and user are so when you go over and set up your account which with, with pushover at that main page you'll see user so that's what goes in for user just copy that and paste that right over into the webhook page and then when you create the new application and give it some name then that API token key will go in to for uh, that token uh, field right here token okay so then you're all set 
So once you have that set up and working, now we're good to go. We can move on to setting up the eight access point trig board here. So let's do that next. All right, so setting up the trig board access point at the gateway is also very easy. So the first thing we want to do is flash the new gateway code over. So to do that, let's go over to the project page and go to uh, gateway setup and you'll see here uh, where the code is right here. So we go to the git page for this and we could compile and download it ourselves but I think the easiest way of doing this is to simply go here and just download the OTA bin file. So I'm actually going to do that now. Right, let's download the bin. Okay, cool, we got that. And a while ago, I made a video on a pretty cool way of flashing files to the ESP32 using OTA, and I made my own little utility for it. So we're going to go over here to firmware programming and uploading, and you see OTA over the air. So you can download the GUI. You can watch that video exactly how it works, and you can go here and grab... Just download this whole thing and then whichever machine you're working off of, use that version. So I'm on a Mac here, so we're going to use the Mac OS version. Okay, and when you first open up the GUI, it's going to uh, pull up a window there to select the file you want to upload and then also the IP address. We don't know what that is because we haven't logged into this trig board and set that up yet. So let's do that now. Back over to the docs. We're going to launch the configurator. So we go to the configurator, click this, and I'm using Safari here. So this is not going to work. This needs to be run in Google Chrome from a Windows 10, Mac, or Linux machine. Okay, we're back in Chrome here. So let's connect. There's trig board right there, we'll pair to it. All right, this is a brand new trig board, so it's never been configured for a Wi-Fi SSID. So we're gonna put that in, the same one as the machine here that is used to uh, send the OTA file over. Okay, cool, so when you save and connect, you should see the IP address, you'll see it go green. And what you wanna do now is make sure that you write down this IP address, or better yet, just put it in right now, so that'll be 0 0.234. Don't hit upload yet because what we need to do is initialize OTA, which will automatically disconnect the configurator because it kills Bluetooth. OTA with Bluetooth on is very slow and unreliable, so I actually kill the Bluetooth when we initialize OTA. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, that disconnected, it's in OTA mode, so let's upload. There it goes. And you'll see over here on the trig board, the LED is flashing, so we're uploading that gateway code now. Just wait for that to be done. Cool. Okay, and the way the gateway code works is when it first powers up, it's going to advertise itself to the configurator uh, for five minutes. So it lets you get in there and set it up for just five minutes on power up or even reset. So now that it's flashing, let's go back to the configurator. And now you see Trigboard Gateway is being advertised, so we'll go ahead and connect to it. And this is purely for setting up the gateway, so a lot of the trig board functionality is not going to work here. It's just a way to configure it with, you know, for its SSID and password and those sort of things. So let's go through that now. And as usual, we're back at the docs here. So right here you see configuration settings is done through configurator and on boot up you'll notice the blue LED flashing for five minutes. So the only thing we need to set up here is the SSID because it is going to be now an access point. So we just need to give it an SSID and password. And because it's using UDP for the messaging, we can also set the port. Now we can do that by scrolling down here and enabling UDP, although it's not actually going to use anything from this except the port. I like to just keep this at the default of one, two, three, four, but you can change it if you want. And this is the only setting here that will be used. So, 
Let's go back up here and now give it a new SSID and password. And I'm just gonna give it something random. In fact, I'm gonna create a new note here so that I know what it is because we're going to set this same SSID and password up on all of the trig boards in the system as well. So if we're making stuff up, um, it's gonna be hard to uh, remember what we set everything to. Okay, we'll go ahead now and save and connect. We've got the SSID and password. Remember, those are the only two things we use. It's going to just disconnect because it doesn't know what to do here. As long as the settings are saved, it's fine. So now what we're going to do is press the reset button on the trig board here. And then now it's going to advertise itself using that SSID and password. That's it. So now all trig boards will use that. So let's get a trig board now set up in the system. Okay, so I just put a battery on a fresh brand new trig board here and I'm so desperate to see if this works that I'm just going to press and hold the wake button here on this trig board, get it into configuration mode. There we go, it's flashing. And then go back up here to connect and connect to just the trig board, not the gateway. And now this is using UDP, so we do not use the SSID and password up here. Instead, what we're going to do is scroll all the way down to UDP enabled and put in the SSID and password down here. And then the static IP can be anything you want, um, but because it's all going to be based off of the same gateway at 192.168.4.1, uh, it should be .4.2, you could be like dot. 100 if you want something like that you can give all of your trig boards a different static IP that might be a, a good idea but I don't think it really matters only if two trig boards are going to wake up at the exact same time that could be a collision you might because then you're gonna have two uh, exact IP addresses trying to communicate back to the access point so uh, we'll give this one though 100 the target IP is good by default there Target port is fine. Gateway, subnet, all of this can be left alone. And then there's your blast count. So what happens is, is this is going to wake up and it's going to send a blast of packets to the access point to guarantee that it gets through. And 10 is fine. Uh, you can even make this 20 if you want and then 10 milliseconds in between. Uh, and then the last thing I'll do is put in the password and save and connect. Cool, so that's a good thing. As soon as I hit save and connect, I scrolled back up and there you see it. We're getting an, an IP address from the gateway. So we are connected to it from this trig board. And for now, what I'm gonna do is leave all of this stuff alone because I'm just really anxious to see if this works. So let's disconnect. All right, so now it's the moment of truth. We're just going to press the wake button for about a second here and hopefully everything works. So I press that. And we can go. We got a push notification. Trig board name button was pressed with the battery voltage. Perfect. That all works. So now what we can do is press and hold this wake button again on the trig board and go back into configurator and set it up exactly how we want. Okay, and here we are back in the configurator. And what we want to do with this, this is going to be for the front door. So Let's call this gym front door. Oh, and I forgot to mention that the password needs to be at least eight characters for the SSID. That was one thing that actually messed me up early on with this. That's just a thing with the ESP32. Oh, and we want to wake on both open and close of this door. So let's just change this to has opened, save. Oopsie. You have to hit save after each one has closed. And then we're just going to wake once an hour and only check if we have a low battery and contact still open. So like if they left the front door still open there. So save that. Cool. We're going to use um, we're going to use lithium batteries for this. So let's set that to three three volts. Okay, that's all there is to it. We'll just disconnect now. Yeah, and this trig board is all set up. Let's just give it a quick test. All right, just a quick bench test here now. We're going to close that door using the nice wide gap sensor. Gym front door has closed. Cool. We're going to then open it up. And you see how fast the notification comes through. Front door has opened. Sweet. 
So this is good. Now I'm going to set up the other boards. One's going to be the same thing as you just saw except for side door and same thing with uh, the windows. Thanks for watching.